Can using an ovulation predictor kit help you get pregnant faster? I'll tell you what the research says and share my own surprising experience. People use ovulation predictor kits, or OPKs, to try to time insemination to ovulation. The OPK detects a spike in luteinizing hormone, or LH, in your urine, which means you're going to ovulate within a day or two. Perfect time to fertilize. Efficient, logical, seems great. But does it work? Let's go to the research. What are my qualifications? Very few! I have no training in medicine or biology. I am a researcher in a different field who likes to read studies to answer my own questions. Maybe you have the same questions. This is not medical advice. Okay, to the studies. Let's start with the basics. Can an OPK actually detect a surge in your LH from your urine? Yes, probably. A study of 26 women in 1996, so small and dated, reported that evening urinary LH tests accurately predicted an LH peak in the bloodstream in 92% of participants. Okay, great. So the underlying mechanism works. We're detecting that LH from our pee. But does it improve your chances of getting pregnant? Again, probably yes. A systematic review of three randomized controlled trials, so that's the gold standard in research, found that people who were randomly assigned to use an OPK were 36% more likely to get pregnant than people randomized to not use OPKs. However, at least one of those studies was funded by OPK companies, so these findings could be biased. Deciding to use an OPK is one thing. Figuring out how to use it is another. Each OPK comes with its own instructions for when to start testing, how many days to test, and what time of day to test. And then of course the internet has its own recommendations. What does the research say? Unsurprisingly, a study funded by a diagnostic test company found that taking more tests is better. Can't imagine any biased motives there. They found that using three tests was least effective. It only detected 63% of LH surges. Taking seven tests, so seven days in a row, detected 81% of surges, and using 10 tests detected 90% of surges. However, using more tests beyond 10 added only small benefits. So to take their advice, test seven to 10 days in a row. Now to figure out when to start testing, these researchers suggest that you should take the length of your shortest cycle and then subtract 17 days. So if you have a 28 day cycle, you'd start testing on day 11 and keep testing for seven to 10 days after that each day. However, another study found that beginning LH testing even sooner on cycle day seven increases the predictive value of LH tests. Just like the last study, this study was also funded by a diagnostics company, so they may have a financial stake in encouraging women to start testing earlier in the hopes that they take more tests overall. This study also found that the combination of cervical mucus and LH testing was more predictive of ovulation than either LH testing or cervical mucus monitoring alone. When to start testing, how long to keep going, the whole process can stress a person out. Or can it? <laughs> One study found that using OPKs actually didn't impact stress levels. It did find that using an OPK decreased positive emotion though, so watch out for the OPK blues. All right, let's sum up the research and then I'll tell you my story. Ovulation predictor kits probably are accurate and they probably can help some people get pregnant. You probably wanna te start testing around cycle day seven or 11 and continue testing for seven to 10 days to maximize your chances of detecting that all important LH surge. I feel like I'm going to end up saying this in every video I make, but there are very few studies on these topics and even fewer are high quality. Many of these studies are funded by test developers and their findings may be biased, but our research is needed. I also wanted to share my own surprising experience with OPKs. They did not work, but not in the way you'd expect. I used ovulation predictor kits for two cycles and never detected an LH surge. The clear blue digital test showed a rise in estrogen, but never an LH peak. And the Premom app showed fluctuating LH levels, but never a peak. It was really frustrating, but I thought I just wasn't ovulating because I was coming off of 15 years of continuous birth control. So at the end of my second cycle, even though I wanted to get pregnant, I thought that there was no chance because I hadn't ovulated. No egg, no baby. I took a pregnancy test at the end of the cycle just to put the idea out of my mind so that I could just kind of prepare for the next cycle and be ready. And when that strip turned pink, I was so stunned. I was so stunned. 
I, I couldn't, I could not speak. I, when I finally did become able to speak, I just kept ranting about how I must be a terrible scientist because I had somehow done the test wrong. I had misused the scientific method. The answers couldn't possibly be accurate, but they were right. Uh, the pregnancy test was right and the OPK was wrong. I think it may have to do with fluctuating LH levels throughout the day and their concentration in my urine. Fun topic. I was testing between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day based on recommendations I saw on Natalie Crawford MD's channel. It's a really great video and I will link it. But maybe I should have tested first thing in the morning so that uh, there was less water in my system to dilute the concentration of LH. That's something that I saw online and certainly in the directions for some OPKs. Or maybe I should have tested later in the afternoon. Some people say that LH spikes between 3 and 5 p.m. I found that it's almost more like an art than a science determining when is the best time to take an LH test for you. And that was really frustrating for me. It was obviously uh, not very helpful in figuring out when to try to get pregnant. If you're using an OPK and not detecting an LH surge, I hope maybe this gives you a little bit of hope. Obviously, this is just an anecdote, a case study of one, not a rigorous randomized control trial. Maybe the problem is how you're testing. I also hope this video was informative. Are there other topics that you'd like me to summarize the research on? Please put them below in the comments or share your stories about LH testing. I'd love to hear from you.